appreciate your time spent with me and I appreciate all of the words and love you shared with my audience. It's been a well, pleasure. I was, I, I was actually going to tell you at the beginning that I found your abattoir film very interesting. Oh, that! <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, that access uh, was pretty amazing. You'd never get that access to an, to an abattoir in this country. My guest today is someone I hold in very high esteem. I'm sure you're going to learn a lot about the media from my guests. Stay tuned. Hello. Evening, sir. How are you, Diana? Are you all right? Yes, I am. I've been having a few technical issues here. Okay. <laughs> I'm sorry. I was scared. I thought you wouldn't make it. <laughs> no, 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 no. It's fine. I, I, um, I, I was here at about 5 2, but then you, you fired fire, fire, fire away. It's all right. It's fine. Go on. All right. So good evening, sir. Great to have you on my show. How are you doing this evening? I'm very well. Thank you, Diana. Thank you for the invitation. Nice to be here. Okay. All right. So let's take it down memory lane. Has the journey been so far for you? When did all of this start? Your world, your journey into the world of production? Well, it all started in 1970 uh, when I joined a hospital radio service. That's a voluntary service uh, which broadcasts to the patients of a particular hospital. Um, it was one in West Wales, in Carmarthen. So that's where it all started. Uh, that led me on to working in commercial radio with uh, a company called Swansea Sound. And uh, I did three years with them before joining the BBC in 1976. And um, I was with the BBC for nearly 20 years as a, a radio presenter, a television announcer, and then eventually um, a, pro a producer, director, and I left them in 1993 as a senior producer. And then I joined, uh, my wife Ellen formed a company called Telescope. Uh, and so I left the BBC and I joined Telescope and I've been with Telescope ever since. Right. Right to all right, some people think to venture into the industry as a creative, talent is all you need. Why some others think qualification is a lot better than talent? If you were to take a stand on that issue, what would you prepare? Qualification or talent, which stands you out more? Well, ideally, probably both, right? Uh, it depends what you want to do. I mean, for example, um, if I was looking to produce a sports program, let's say, right? And I was looking for a presenter for a sports program. The sort of person that I would look for would be a person with experience uh, of sport. Okay, somebody who really, really knows their sport inside out, is passionate about sport, loves their sport, and uh, is it would, would be excited about presenting a sports program. The television stuff, the technical stuff, we can teach them as they go along, right? So the most important thing for me in, in that sense would be the passion and the enthusiasm and the interest of the person presenting. On the other hand, if you're going into a technical role or if you're going into a role behind the camera, then um, certainly the qualifications help because presumably if you've done your degree, you will have done camera work, you will have done editing, you will know a lot about production, you know a lot about direction and so on and so forth. And that would put you in very good stead um, for being on the technical side, you know? So, so for me, to answer your question, um, depending on what you want to do, it can be, it can be a little bit of both really. Okay. Does that make sense? All right. Thank you for your response, sir. Okay, so that takes me to the next question. We've identified talent and we've also identified qualification. What other attributes do you point out in a person that singles that individual out and you think, oh, this person has got what it requires to be an, a creative person? Um, again, depending on what that person wants to do, if I start with somebody who wants to be a presenter, I would look for somebody who has a warm personality, um, who is expressive, who uh, can communicate well, can communicate easily, can explain things easily. Um, somebody who you who, who you feel you know, somebody who you can feel is perhaps one of your best friends, even though you've never met them. Um, that that's that's the sort of person that does well as as a presenter so long as they've got the communication skills as well 
Um, moving on to other roles, the production role, I think the most important thing you need in, at that level is organization. You need, if, if you're going to be a producer, you need to be organized. Uh, you need to be able to know exactly when things are happening, exactly how much things cost, um, who's going to be involved, et cetera, et cetera. For a director, it's very much the creative vision because the producer or writer or whoever will give you a script. And as director, it's your job to turn that script into pictures. So if you're looking for a director, you're looking for somebody with that creative idea and that creative image who can convey words and can convey a story in an interesting visual way, you know. Um, other roles, things like production manager, again, organization, researcher, which is vitally important. Again, it comes down to you need somebody with that terrier-like ability. That's somebody, somebody who will not let something go. If you ask them to find out something about a story, they just will not let it go. I mean, I'll give you an example of, of, of a series I did a few years ago. And we were looking for, um, he was actually a murderer who had been buried in the cemetery. We were told by the police and by everybody else that he'd been buried in such and such a, 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 a cemetery. On investigation, he wasn't there, right? But my researcher was one of these people who just would not let that go. So she spent day and night for ages going around cemetery records all over the country trying to find this guy. And in the end, she did. But that's what you need in a researcher, is somebody who will just not give up, somebody who will keep going until they've got what they need, you know. Um, on the other side then, camera people, um, but a good cameraman, you need a good eye. You need somebody who can look at something and instinctively think of the best way of, sh of, of being able to shoot that. Uh, looking at the best angle, looking at the best light, looking at the best, you know, does he need to light it? Can he use natural light? Does he need to use a filter? All of that sort of stuff is what you're looking for in a cameraman. And a cameraman uh, should be able to give you a portfolio of work. So if, if, if you're looking at choosing a cameraman, that cameraman should be able to give you um, a, a portfolio of stills and a video these days. And with all the technical stuff that's available now, there's no excuse why somebody shouldn't really. Um, same, 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 same with sound. If somebody say, says that they want to be a sound recordist, you want somebody who has the enthusiasm and, and the basic knowledge of how sound works. Um, so, I mean, that, that's so, so, I mean, you, you, you know, you can go through roles and roles and roles, you can go through wardrobe, you can go through um, location managers, you can go all sorts of things. But if you boil it all down, it boils down to is passion, uh, the love for what you want to do, the experience and the willingness to get that experience. Um, and, and not expect to just walk into the top job as soon as you walk out of university or so. Yeah. Turn, turn up in the studio that you need and, and also the, the tenacity to keep at it whatever it is you know because whatever shoot you're on whatever film you're making at some point things are going to go wrong things are going to go off plan or whatever and you need the tenacity to be able to stick with it in whatever role you're in and make sure that it gets done does that make sense? Ooh. Yes, a whole lot of sense. I was so engrossed in your speech. I didn't want it to end at all. All right, you might be wondering, you wondered why didn't I do the interview, ask you to introduce yourself at the beginning of the interview. Well, before I before I queued you in, I already told my viewers I had someone really special coming with a world of industry experience. So would you do me the honor of introducing yourself officially to my viewers, sir? Tell me about yourself, sir. Uh, well, okay, my, my name is Richard Rees. Um, I live in Wales. I, uh, I live over in West Wales, out in the countryside here. Um, I've been a broadcaster ever since I left uh, college uh, back in the 70s. So that's coming, well, it's 50 years now. Um, and that's all I've done during that time. Uh, I've kept, spent my time between radio and television. Um, I often get asked, which one do I prefer? Which one do I love most? And that's difficult, but I think it comes down to radio at the end because that's where I started. Although I do love television as well. Um, I'm, I'm married, I have a daughter. Uh, my daughter also works in the media. Um, she is uh, she's a company director of a television company. 
She also does a lot of radio work. She works a lot for Radio 2 um, and for radio stations elsewhere as well. Uh, my wife, who started Telescope, who started the TV company, she's still very active making uh, documentaries. At the moment, she's working on an international documentary. Um, she's Her main subjects are science. Um, that, that's what she's most interested in. My background is really science and wildlife. Those are the two things that I've spent most time doing. So science, wildlife and medicine really have been the three three things that have um, that have taken my time. On radio, on the other hand, it's all music. My show on the radio is still a music show. So, I mean, you can see from the CDs behind uh, with everything else that uh, that that's that's been amassed over the last 50 odd years so yeah <laughs> all right good to hear all of that sir okay previously in the interview you mentioned traits that you look out for that stands an individual out in the profession can you mention some of those traits that new newbies into the industry should avoid while climbing the ladder of success things they should avoid it was um I think it's quite difficult these days to get experience. That's the one thing. And it's very tempting for a lot of people to go in for internships um, that are unpaid. Now, that can be an advantage and it can work, but I think people need to be careful of how far they push that. There's, there's a line between using an unpaid internship to get experience and being taken advantage of. So uh, my advice there would be, be careful that you get your experience, uh, but once you feel that you're, being t t uh, that you're being taken for a ride, then it's time perhaps to move on somewhere else. So be very careful about internships and, and, and unpaid in internships. I know, you know, people in university get internships and that's part of the course and that's fine. But a lot of people I know, a lot of young people I, I, I know, take up unpaid internships with companies after they left university, when they could be working, and they do these un unpaid jobs, and some of them get trapped in them for a very long time. So I'd, I'd be careful about that. I'd be careful too of assuming that you're going to walk into a top job, because you're not. Um, basically, if you come out of university with a media degree, that's a bit like a driving test. All it says is you're capable to take a car on the road, just, but you don't start learning to drive until you've been driving for quite a while. Well, it's a bit the same with television and radio. You, when you start off, when you leave university, you've got your degree that says you've got some experience and you've got the basics, but that's when you really start learning is from that point on. And I think, um, because I've come across quite a few people with with, with with some attitude of entitlement, you know, that they're owed a top job as soon as they walk out. That is not going to happen. And you shouldn't want it to happen because you should have the experience. Okay. Thank you so much, sir, for all of that world of experience you shared with me today. By, by, by the way, you don't need to call me sir. Please call me Richard, okay? Please. Hey, okay. all right. Taking note of that. Um, okay, so now this this question will be a little bit personal. Looking back at you joining the media, is there any particular experience that you think about that brings this fond memories that um, brings this nostalgic smile to your face that you would like to recount to my audience? Any particular uh, experience you remember? Any personal experiences? Yeah. Um, That's quite uh, things that I think memorable things. Uh, certainly, in, an interview with Paul McCartney which was very memorable for me because I was only 19 years old when I did the interview. Um, an interview with the band Queen. Um, so musically, uh, a lot of interviews with, with people who are world famous, you know. Um, television wise, uh, um, I think I did a, a, I did a series, a six part series with a forensic pathologist. Uh, called Professor Bernard Knight, who was at, at that time was was, was was probably the best known pathologist in the world. I spent 12, 12 months with him, which is one of the most fascinating times I've I've, I've spent. Um, wildlife wise, I've worked a lot with bears, and um, yeah. I've uh, yeah, and uh, I've developed quite quite a fondness and quite a close relationship with bears. We seem to get on. 
Um, so I mean, just just the the possibility of being able to travel and uh, try, you know to North America, the Arctic, and and and, and so on to film brown bears, polar bears, and so on. Um, the opportunity to travel as well. We did two series uh, going around the world. Uh, we fo we followed one latitude line right around the world. Um, and then we did the second series, which followed a longitude line right around the world. That took us through both poles. So um, I've been very lucky. I've been to Antarctica twice. I've been to the Arctic several times. Um, I spent some time in Africa, uh, South America. Um, so it's the, the opportunities, I think, that the job gives you are fantastic. I mean, they, it, they, it, it's an unique job in that it opens doors for you that you'd never otherwise be able to open. You meet people you'd never otherwise be able to meet. And, and uh, it's, it, it's, it's just a fantastic um, way to earn, to earn. But uh, there's been a lot of very special moments like that. Mm. The interview is so enjoyable, I, I wish it wouldn't have to end. <laughs> but um, at this point, I would ask you for words and Mabu, your final words that you would want to say to my audience. Just remember that radio, television, whatever media you choose. I mean, I say radio and television because that's that, that's what my generation were brought up with. But these days, there is so much more. But whatever medium you choose, it's all about story. It's all about telling a story. And what's important when you tell the story is that you really believe in it and that you really want to tell it. So if you're starting out in this job, if you're starting out as a producer, as a director, whatever you want to do, the first thing I would say is learn. Watch and learn. Watch the people who are at the top of their field. Watch the people who are doing the job now, who are doing a great job now. Learn from them. Look at what they do. Learn what they do and then go and do it yourself. But get that passion. Get that real desire to tell the stories that you want to tell. Thank you for agreeing to come to my interview. I appreciate you. I appreciate your time spent with me and I appreciate all of the words and nothing you shared with my audience. It's been a well, pleasure. I was, I, I, I was actually going to tell you at the beginning that I found your abattoir film very interesting. Oh, that! <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, that access uh, was pretty amazing. You'd never get that access to an to an abattoir in this country. Um, yeah, I mean, it, 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 it was it was very inter interesting to see how things are done over there, you know. Um, I, I mean, you spent the day there, did you? You what? You spent the uh, day there, did you? Yeah, I did. Yeah, 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 yeah. 